Today on TFB TV, the most controversial review I've had for you guys in a while. I'm reviewing the FN High Power. Yeah, not the old one, the new one. The High Power was the original Wonder 9. After 80 plus years of continuous production, including several years under Nazi control after being seized by the Germans in World War II, FN discontinued the high power in 2018. Other than the straight up dog shit trigger, the high power outclassed the 1911 in every way. Double the capacity, reliable, durable, and handsome. This was a more mature, more experienced John Moses Browning, his do-over of the 1911 after Colt's patent expired in the late 1920s. Obviously, JMB didn't just cook up the high power for fun. He did it for the cheese. Or... I mean, I guess the fromage, because the French wanted a new military gun. Their solicitation sought a hammer-fired pistol that held at least 10 rounds of at least 9mm in a gun that was lighter than 1 kilogram, and a lot of those just disqualified the 1911. Also, the gun must have a safety and must be able to be stripped without tools. Those were the only requirements. Oh yeah, and it had to be able to kill a man at 50 yards. That was... In the requirements. I wonder how they tested that last part out anyways. But after all that, the high power comes out, they present it to the French, and the French toasted it. But the Belgians didn't waffle, and they adopted it in 1935. The English teed it up in the 1950s, and after that, the Australians fostered a liking for the high power and issued it to replace the combat boomerang. The high power itself, licensed clones or unlicensed clones, have been the official sidearm for the armed forces of over 90 countries, and it's still in service with around 50 militaries across the world. Almost a century later, an FN has reintroduced the high power, but here's where the air punching starts, because most of you are going to call this the high powerino, or a high power in name only. Other than maintaining some features of the original, keeping some design cues and some of the aesthetics of the original P-35 model, this is a completely different gun with no parts compatibility whatsoever. I'm going to start with the specs, and then I'll address your visible outrage in a couple of minutes. This is an all-metal 9mm single-action only pistol with a 17 plus 1 capacity that weighs less than 40 ounces. It's being introduced as a full size with an overall length of 8 inches and a barrel length of 4.7 inches. I'm not even going to tell you what the MSRP is right now because I can tell you're too angry to handle it. Some of you, like myself, may applaud the design changes, which, trust me, I'm going to go into with great detail in this video. FN wanted to resurrect the high power as a modern rendition that would be more reliable, more accurate, more durable than the original, rather than simply cloning a century-old design. I think that's great, but most of you, perhaps understandably, will see this gun as the Phantom Menace to the original legendary classic FN High Powers A New Hope. Call it a Jar Jar Binks pistol, if you will. The new high power adds ambi controls, including a very easy to use ambi thumb safety and an ambi slide release that mimics the original, which was already pretty comfy when it was introduced. A bit like the 1911, you really didn't need to mess with too much as far as levers and buttons on the originals because they were already pretty good as is. While maintaining the same lines as the original, the Ergos have been slightly tweaked, including a redesign of the hammer, a larger beaver tail to eliminate that infamous hammer bite experienced with the OG high power. The frame had to be reworked also to increase capacity. The original high power is a 13 plus 1 capacity gun, while this new high power uses 17 round magazines. Intelligently, FN switched the sighting system to be compatible with the 509 series, which means that there are plenty of sight options out there for you already, including night sights and tall suppressor-ready sights. And you know that barrel manufacturers are probably going to crank out some threaded barrels for this new high power soon enough, but there's also a rumor floating around that FN may actually make a threaded barrel version as well. After all, they've already done that with the 509 and a bunch of their other guns, so you can just assume that it's on their agenda. 
Sights on this version are also great, all blacked out, serrated front and rears with a thin front sight, making this gun easy to shoot precisely. In my opinion, the most important change is that the construction and the metallurgy of the new version is up to modern specifications. The new models transitioned away from the operating system in the classic model that was similar to the 1911 to another Browning design, the Browning Short Action. This is the same action used in the famously reliable, famously durable SIG P226. Now, while FN changed the lockup, they also made the ejection port larger to make extraction and ejection easier and more reliable on the gun. Similarly, because the barrel needed to be reconfigured to operate with a new recoil system, FN also redesigned, lengthened, and polished the feed ramp for increased reliability. Oh yeah, and the new high power barrel is cold hammer forged stainless steel made on the same barrel machines that manufacture the M240 and M249 saw machine gun barrels. Cold hammer forging I've talked about before. It's of course the process where the barrel is shaped through hammer forging rather than simply drilled out from a hunk of metal via button rifling. This is an expensive process and it usually means that the barrels would be substantially more durable and possibly more accurate than conventionally manufactured barrels. The frame and the slide are PVD or physical vapor deposition coated which is the same coating system being used by other top tier duty gun manufacturers on the market today. It looks great, it's uniform. The FDE, which is of course really hard to get right and match. According to FN, the FDE version of this gun matches all the way through from the upper to the lower to the grips and it looks really good. It's highly corrosion resistant, but you'll notice that I did manage to put a little boo-boo on top of the slide uh, whenever we were out at the range because we ran this thing pretty hard. I'll just grip it as hard as I can. And That's what she said. Nice. So the finish is great, it's tough, but of course it's not invincible. All of these modifications to increase durability and reliability means that FN has multiple copies of the new high power that have gone over 35,000 rounds without an issue. That's the biggest plus, again, for this new model. Increased durability, increased reliability. Similarly, field stripping's much easier than the original high power. I've dropped the magazine, locked the slide back. You turn this little lever right here, and then basically it comes apart just like that. All right, come on, buddy. Let's get in the truck. You can sit in dad's lap and pretend to drive us to the range with the FN high power. As you can imagine, shooting the single action only new high power was a wonderful experience. It's hard to beat a 40 ounce, all metal, single action only nine millimeter for pure range performance. Shooting the original high power was not exactly pleasant. The trigger was crap, especially for a single action, and the abbreviated beaver tail caused slide bite. The experience with the new high power is completely different, as you might imagine. It's comfortable to shoot. The trigger is an 8.7 out of 10. 8.7. Almost perfect. Trigger weight's about 4 pounds. The only complaint I have is that the reset is about a millimeter or two longer than I'd like, but that's how it was with the original high power too. It's otherwise fantastic. This pistol was accurate in no small part due to the excellent trigger and the recessed match crown on the muzzle. FN high power, 50 yards. That's not bad. Eight out of 10. Yeah, this is actually a really accurate gun. Um, I would like a little contrast in the front sight, but I mean, you know, these blackout sights are actually really nice. The new high power is more fun to shoot than drinking at breakfast. Requill virtually non-existent with even warm 1300 FPS plus 115 grain range ammo we were using. Dude, not bad. This thing is very, very, very light recoiling. That's like my first observation. Focus on the front sight, you get a good grip. Very flat shooting. It's truly a modernized high power with the same general aesthetic, but 21st century capability. And of course, reliability was flawless with the half case of ammo that we put through it. We didn't lubricate it at all out of the box. We just picked it up and started firing. We blew through 500 rounds of nine so quickly that the slide and the dust cover on the frame 
were too hot to touch by the time we were finished with it. We had to pour ice water on the gun just to bring the temperature down enough where we could actually handle it. We also worked one of the grip screws a little bit loose, so it might do you well to throw on a little bit of Elmer's glue or thread lock on there after you take it apart and lube it up for the first time. I was kidding about the glue, don't do that. The updates, including the larger ejection port, the switch to the Browning short action, the elongated feed ramp, and the cold hammer forge barrel paid dividends in reliability and accuracy, but 500 rounds is the equivalent of just the tip for a gun review, in my opinion. That said, if a gun does go 500 rounds out of the box without a single malfunction, especially without being cleaned or lubed, it's a good start. I can't wait to subject this gun to more rounds down the pipe, especially because this has been one of the more fun guns that I've gotten to review lately. It was just a blast to shoot. Fit and finish is excellent. It's just nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's uh, 10 rounds. We're at like seven, eight yards. And I mean, look at that. Oh, all one hole. It was all, all in one hole. That's pretty, pretty good. As I mentioned, there's no parts compatibility between the old and the new high power. That mostly doesn't bother me at all. That's to say that the redesign doesn't rustle my jimmies in the slightest. What's annoying, however, is that the redesign also means that there's no Kydex holster compatibility with the old high power, although some leather holsters that'll work with the OG high power will work for the new one. FN says that they've provided copies of the guns to well-known holster manufacturers to get some holster compatibility out there, and it's on the way. The redesign also means that you're not gonna have compatible legacy grip panels either since the new high power has a stretched grip to increase capacity. But the silver lining here is that FN has plenty of grips available on their website, wood, plastic, G10. At least my copy came with two sets of plastic grips, black and brown plastic. This gun's also gonna be available in black, FDE, or a really classy stainless finish. And according to FN, at launch, there are over 350 combinations of finish and grip for you to choose from. So while the original high power held just 13 rounds, manufacturers are making and have been making 15 round magazines that will flush fit into high power clones. This new high power is made to run flush fit 17 rounders, just like other full size handguns. However, the downside is again, that the original magazines will not work with the new high power. Obviously because FN wanted to increase the capacity, it isn't like they could take 15 rounders and make it work because they would be too short. Even though they do fit in the gun, they're too short to operate with it. I also noticed what seems to be an interchangeable checkered back strap on the back here. I wonder if new inserts are going to be on the way. Now really, I can't wait to see the comments for this video because I bet number one complaint, chief complaint going to be the redesign. Me, I think firearms manufacturers should be updating their models as they go along. I think this is long overdue, but then again, I understand my philosophy about firearms is different than most of your philosophies, and that's cool. If you're a traditionalist, great. The important thing is that we're passionate about it. I like the rework. On the other hand, I know my audience, and I know a lot of you guys are, again, more traditional than I am, so I understand going to be a little bit of ass pain, a ton of you guys who are absolutely pissed that FN would give this gun the high power name. Again, I applaud your passion, just as well as I applaud FN's courage to resist the urge to take the cheap way out and just run another clone copy of the gun that they already made. I'm gonna say it again, FN already discontinued the old school high power because nobody bought it. So as much chest thumping as there's gonna be about the redesign in the comments, none of you motherfuckers bought the original, so take the little dick low power energy over to Hickok 45's comment section because we're talking BDE, BHP only. Why would FN just start selling a gun they had to stop selling because no one bought it? Answer that before you get worked up about the new model. Now, I haven't mentioned price yet, and here's where I get a little hesitant myself. This is a premium design, premium build gun, all made in the US, again, right next to and with the machinery manufacturing M16s, M4s, M240s, M249s used by the military. No expense spared except this goddamn plastic guide rod for some reason, and the frames are cast, not forged 
not that big of a deal. That said, this is still priced on the high end for pistols in this comparable market. Not unrealistically so, but this is more expensive than, say, a SIG P226, which I would say is in the same kind of high-end, all-metal, elegant but tough segment of the market. When I asked FN about pricing for the new high power, they simply said that they could have made it cost less, but that would have involved cutting corners or manufacturing outside the United States, which they were unwilling to do with their flagship classic pistol. The main factor in pricing is the fact that this gun is 100% U.S. made and out of premium materials. MSRP starts at $1,269. Although I've seen street price under $1,100. I know this is going to be a tough sell for anyone who isn't a huge high power fan already. Yeah, I'm worried this might be a niche market gun, but that doesn't stop it from being a great gun, which it is. Now, the next logical question you have, which one do you get? The new high power or the SA35 from Springfield? I've got both right here. When I was on the phone with FN's engineers, they had a great analogy to describe the thought process when they were deciding whether or not to copy their old design or to do something more of a modernized departure. When they selected to update the new high power the way they did, their philosophy was that of the new Ford Bronco. Would everyone love an exact copy of a 1968 Ford Bronco, carbureted, drum brakes, no air conditioning, 12 to the gallon? Absolutely, especially if it were $40,000. However, there are just as many, if not more people who would pay $75,000 for something that borrows the same name, the same aesthetic, keeps the same tradition, the same design cues, but it's got disc brakes, gets double the gas mileage, has two-way climate control, has a great stereo, and has a state-of-the-art breathalyzer ignition that I get Hop to blow into whenever he leaves the bar with daddy. I thought that this was an excellent analogy for the difference between the SA35, which is almost a complete clone of the original, and the new high power. If you're looking for an updated clone of the original with good parts, holster, and mag compatibility, Springfield, great option. But if you want a fully modernized overhaul by the original company that manufactured the high power, the company that created it, then this new FN high power is for you. There's no question that the high power is legendary, and to this day, it's still a viable tool. The OG is still in military service around the world, including being the official sidearm of the Australian Armed Forces, might. But remember, the high power is FN's pistol. They own the mark. Are they obligated to manufacture the same version of the same gun, even if it's arguably obsolete and clearly commercially impractical? Do they have to do that forever? Are they allowed to do what countless other manufacturers do over the years? Perhaps to not such a degree, to not such an iconic handgun, and update it for modern times using modern manufacturing methods and creating a more durable, reliable version than the original? Even if you don't agree with me that manufacturers should be obligated to update older designs, can you at least agree that of anyone, at least FN's entitled to do it? Tell me what you think in the comments, but I don't mind slaughtering a sacred cow to update a design from time to time. Whew, I realized that was a hot one, but I really enjoyed it. Again, I had fun with the FN High Power. I think it's a fantastic new pistol. Guys, if you want to pick one up, might I suggest going over to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore, one of our sponsors for a long time. Or if you need ammo for it, don't hesitate to go to Ventura Munitions. They have fantastic deals. Do you want to win a free gun? We're viewer supported. We rely on you. We don't take money in exchange for positive reviews like a lot of YouTube channels do out there. So if you would like to consider supporting us, hop on Patreon, Subscribestar, or Utreon. If you are on Utreon or Subscribestar only, you're at the $5 level or higher, you are automatically entered to win one of four free guns that we give away every single month. Make sure you check it out at the link below. But I'm just glad you're watching. Thank you and take care.